Hey guys, this is Proofman from Overclocking TV. Welcome to the OC Show, uh, season four, episode seventeen. So that's uh, quite a lot, and we are approaching the end of the year. Uh, but there's so many news tonight, and uh, I will be joined by Buildzoid tonight to discuss all the latest tech news and hardware and things. How are you doing, my friend? Uh, doing very good, thank you. Perfect, and uh, welcome everyone on the chat as well on Twitch when we do the live stream. That's uh, that's always good to see you guys there. It's uh, every Friday at 5 p.m. And uh, obviously, if you guys uh, watch the video on YouTube as well, it's uh, always good to have the comments and what you think about the, the videos. And we read all the comments as well, so that's very important for us. Um, Buildzoid, there is a ton of things to discuss uh, today. Uh, let's have a quick look at the competition first, uh, because the... Um, there's a few things, especially the Country Cup going on. Um, if we have a look at what's going on there, the USA is in the first place as of now. There's still 42 days to go. So if you guys want to participate, yeah. you still have time. Uh, just participate on your on your country if you can. Uh, Czech Republic is second. By the way, did you bench for Czech Republic? Stage five, I think, is currently all me. For the Czech Republic. That's actually sad because you're supposed to bench for Antarctica according to the vote of the people uh, yeah, but the from last too. week. And <laughs> I'm <laughs> I'm benching for Antarctica and I'm not the last country. So you should you should do that. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I think think I'll because uh, apparently there's other people in the Czech Republic who actually care about the country cup, so I'll help them out. Like personally I don't care that much, but it's just there's other people benching as well, so I figured I'd throw in uh, my considerable collection of hardware to help out. So I'm work like I'm still working pretty hard on stage five. Um, the score that's currently up there is a not valid because I have the wrong system info version. B um, not high enough. Um, there's some weird like the the guy who was uh, who's beating me like. I don't know how he gets such a high physics score. I have no idea how he gets such a high physics score. I have way better memory settings than him. And, like, the same CPU speed, and I'm losing by so many points on physics, I don't get it. You're doing uh, it wrong. <laughs> man, I hate the software side of overclocking. It's like, why are the... Clocks are great. The, the scores are terrible for some reason. Um, I also tried that score that's currently up there. That was on liquid nitrogen, but it really wasn't a long session. And that's with the RX Vega. Um, and basically, I, like, I did a, the, the score that's up there was like at 1750 set in Wattman, but the clock actually the card's running at is like way higher because RX Vega like steps up its speed as you cool it down, which is kind of weird. Um, and the, like that card has so much weirdness about it. I need to do so much <laughs> testing. But uh, uh, the other thing is it like, it doesn't pull a ton of power because I was only on 1.25 volts because liquid edition BIOS, but uh, uh, the thermal paste blew up. Um, oh, that, so that's the issue you had with the HBM actually cracking? Yeah, it actually, like, what happened was, like, it didn't even crack the core. The core was fine. It's one of the HBM stacks, or maybe both of them just disconnected. So I was reading sub-zero temperatures on the GPU core and the GPU hotspot. As in, I was reading sub-zero. It was reading zero, so it was below zero. Um, but the HBM was at like plus 50, which I couldn't bench at that because it becomes really like that stuff is really temperature sensitive. So actually like my check to make sure that I had a temperature problem was basically trying to run clocks that at idle would work at really low negatives, but nah, it didn't. So I basically called it there at the end of the session there because I was using the card from Alza, uh, .co.uk from me being on the Alza OC team. And the deal with that card is I have to keep it in like new condition. So I can't take a soldering iron to it. And I can't cover <laughs> it in plasti dip. Just wait for it. Just <laughs> so, wait for it. <laughs> so basically the card was like, there was no other insulation except like blue shop towel all over it, um, which actually did a pretty like damn good job of keeping the card not soaking wet. Um, because I pulled it out and it was pretty much dry around the front area and even on the back. Um, so yeah, I still need to do a lot more on that. Um, and then stage four, I plan to participate. 
I only just realized that stage four is not GPU Pi 1 billion, but 32 billion. I'm really not happy with that. 32 <laughs> billion takes so long. But I, I think, like, this being the country cup, like, that, that's a... That's a cool fact that, like, this is, you know, this is, like, a benchmark I feel like a lot of people hate. Because on the, on the cards for this, uh, for the competition, it takes, like, 40 minutes to finish. Oh, my God. Like, that's not cool. It's like benching <laughs> Super Pie 32 AM, like, on, on the old Pinchum 4 something. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm used to, like, benchmarks being under a couple of minutes, and then there's this thing, and it's just like, oh... <laughs> Well, so uh, I'm gonna just run that on water. Okay, but and that's not so. So that's one of the reasons why you had a, a lower score and a bad score, and that you did not continue too much on trying to bench for that yet. But you you will get back to yeah. Benching, I'm definitely. Right? I'm I'm going back at it. Um, I've been trying to figure out what the hell is with the physics score. I'm gonna change motherboards. Um, because ultimately, like, if I can't beat him on efficiency, I'm gonna beat him on raw clock speed anyway. <laughs> It's like, sure, you might be beating me at 4.05 gigahertz, but I'm making this thing go 4.2. Um, <laughs> though I don't think my chip is actually capable of that, but we'll see. We'll see. I have another Ryzen 7 coming pretty soon. Um, so, yeah, I'm actually kind of enjoying the uh, Country Cup so far. And I do plan to bench a lot more for it. I don't really have any illusions about the Czech Republic actually pulling a winner, because, like, stage one is basically unwinnable for us. I don't... Th I, I don't know. It's not going too bad right now. We do have like four scores in that one. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll see. It really depends. It really depends, I feel like. Uh, Actually, there was a good comment from uh, Napilp. It's like, you, you get lower score <laughs> because you bench for the wrong country. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. So okay. that's uh okay. So that's going on. Country Cup still forty two days to go. Uh, right now, USA is first. Uh, Czech Republic is second. Ukraine is in the top three. Uh, then we have uh, UK, Germany, Israel, Italy, India, and France. Uh, along with Australia fighting for the top ten. I'm waiting for Australia to pull out some decent score, especially because they have a very good one in stage uh, four right now. Uh, but they still haven't submitted three of the stages, and we know they sandbag. That's their special feature and things they do every special year. Specialty, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Australia, show it up, show it up. At least, at least a good score per week will be nice. And uh, yeah, if you want to join uh, Team Antarctica, uh, you're welcome to join me. Because <laughs> there's only one score there. <laughs> Man, that's a freaking laptop you bench. <laughs> <laughs> that's my laptop. Yes. These bench real hardware. <laughs> I do have some good stuff You're here. You're an embarrassment for the, all the entire one person of Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, on the other side of the news competitions, there's although the Rookie Rumble finishing tomorrow night. So that's going to be very, very soon to be, uh, to be ending. I cannot show the scores because it's not working. Um, but other scores that are very important and we want to talk about, and especially you, Bilzo, it says, I want to talk about that score. It's the score from iCookie. So what is going on with iCookie's score on the X299? So iCookie recently tied Dan Kopp for 6,223 uh, marks in XTU on the i97980XE. He's technically ranked as second because Dan Kopp got the score first. So, nonetheless, this is, a, this is a really impressive score, but more importantly, it's done on a prototype of the X299 SoC champion board. And the board looks freaking awesome. Well, the board um, look was nothing, actually. Well, what? I mean, it's I mean, a, it's a four-dim uh, four motherboard, but it doesn't... I mean, it doesn't have any <laughs> cooling on the chipset or on the South Bridge or anything. Yeah, but, like, you don't cool the chipset. Like, nobody... <laughs> like, of course no one does it, but I mean, it's not final. It's definitely just a yeah, prototype. Yeah, no, I said it's a prototype. It's a... Pro well, I don't know if it's a prototype. It might, like, be the 10-unit run that only Gigabyte will ever use for breaking their world records and uh, not sharing, but... Uh, the board looks absolutely insane in terms of at least specs. Um, there's three power connectors. I assume one of them is a PCIe. I don't think they went for eight uh, CPU, eight pin power connectors because, like, there's I mean, not a power supply on yeah. Earth that would actually hook up to that. But I, I'm I'm pretty sure there's there's gonna be more PSUs with three four pins, uh, three eight pins for the CPU in the near future. For sure, that's gonna come. 
I don't know if it's breaking the specs, though. I, I mean, spec-wise, I don't see a problem with it. I mean, I, I think uh, Antec had a series of power supplies where the PCIe and the CPU power connectors on the PSU side were interchangeable. So for if you had one of those power supplies, you could have literally just gone and bought an extra CPU connector for that series, and you could have used, like, triple CPU power out of it. But... Uh, yeah, no, it's it's crazy that we're seeing a motherboard with uh, three eight pins. Um, also, the heat sinks on this thing look absolutely ridiculous. Now, if only they ever made it retail. <laughs> <laughs> so as of now, the, this is uh, did he input the exact name of the board he was using? Yeah, it's uh, he, it's the so X two nine nine SOC champion. champion. So it's not the SOC champion LN two or SOC champion limited edition something. As of now, it's called the X299 could, SOC I Champion. Mean, it could come up to the market at some point. Yeah, it could be like the X99 SOC Champion that we actually end up seeing at retail, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> but I, I, what I like about the design is if you look if you look like this, you don't really see it. You say, oh, it's a big hit, a hit thing on the, uh, on the power delivery. But if you look this way, you really see that it's actually quite huge. And spreading yeah, across, it's massive. so they it's might actually have massive. extended the uh, like the number of phases and the and the whole it, the power delivery to be like much bigger to actually just provide more power, maybe. Like yeah, I mean, Gigabyte didn't I think Gigabyte managed to cram, I think a sixteen phase onto X seventy nine. They could do uh, it. I mean, if you if you pulled on the um, yeah the RAM slot, everything else, and it actually okay. looks like that's. That might have happened here because the motherboard doesn't have a four-way uh, setup for the PCIe slots. Like, they're all scrunched up, so you could run three-way, but you couldn't run four. But, I mean, there's no... You could actually Nobody just... Nobody four-way anyway. I mean, so. the first PCI Express slot, you can just dig that one out and say, okay, we're not going to use anything and just use the second one. Where everyone is on the second one, but for you, that's the first one. So you moved everything... Down the uh, down the lanes because even yeah. even the, the the CPU location it seems to be a little bit closer to the PCI Express than uh, than lower in the motherboard yeah, it does, than it is on like other they, boards. They've moved, uh, though actually it might be maybe they made the ball board taller. If you look at where the <laughs> I/O ends, like the last port of the I/O ends long before the rest of the motherboard does. <laughs> actually, so maybe they made the board taller. Actually, uh, and it doesn't fit. In which case, it would be like a bench. Well, in which table case, only. it doesn't fit in a case. It doesn't fit in anything. Yeah. Oh, it fits uh, on the bench table. Yeah, it fits on bench <laughs> tables only. But no case would ever take it, which that would kill it at retail completely. Even though it's like, I'd love to see this motherboard go retail. Like, I'd buy it just to to have. Actually, it if, if we if check, there is no holes here. Yeah. It looks like they might have literally taken uh, maybe uh, one of the other board designs they have, and then they just stretched it upwards. <laughs> so, so it's supposed to be on the side of the board if we uh, if we look at the ATX form factor. So if it's here, that's going to be right underneath that. So that I don't think that's going to happen. Let me check if we can have on the uh, on the other yeah, board. I mean, you can't actually see the screw holes for which is too bad, but. They're not on the... There is some. Check, check, here. They're not on the end. Like, they're not on the end edge of that board at all. But I mean, check, I check. I kind check. of feel like they've literally just gone and given themselves more space up top instead of worrying about the lower portion. Because if you... Because I wouldn't be surprised if this was actually just take, like, a beefed-up VRM addition to a uh, existing board design that Gigabyte already has. In which case, from a designer's perspective, it's much easier to not redo the entire bottom portion of the board and just add a bit up top. Hmm. Could even be. And, and if they don't plan to take it retail, that doesn't make a problem because oh, yeah, you sure. couldn't sell this board. Yeah. <laughs> so. that's actually, that's a, that's a good, valid point. I see that there is some caps mod on the, on the PSU wire as well. <laughs> it might be an EVGA PSU which come with that standard. I don't know what PSU they use. Maybe they actually maybe they put it the info in there. Memory VGA mainboard. No, Corsair fifteen hundred yeah, watts. So it's a modded one. one. It's yeah. not a, it's not something out of the uh, of the oven. Oh, yeah. All right. So, so well, we'll see. We have to uh, wait for someone at Gigabyte to confirm that if that was gonna go to the market or not, and if yes, at which price. And 
how that's going to be. I don't care if it's 500 bucks I'm buying. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, all the other XOC boards are also like ridiculously expensive on X299. So, you know, it, it's like... And if they come with one with like the triple power connectors and this huge VRM that it looks like it has, I mean, they have an argument for that. They have a pretty good justification at that point for having a higher price point than everybody else. Yeah, true. I mean, uh, it's uh, it's it's just a a way of uh, trying out to see who can get the the best things out on the on the uh, on the on the different. No, product, What's up, you can, uh, product you try. All right, uh, second news of uh, this uh, week is actually uh, about someone, a tech tuber, Jace Two Cent, that uh, tried out LN2 for the first time. So, Bill, uh, that was interesting. Did you did you watch that video? What uh, what did happen there? Yeah, uh, I watched the entire video. So, um, basically. Um, Kingpin from EVGA came over with a 1080 Ti Kingpin edition, and him and Jay Z Two Cents uh, broke the fire. Uh, no, not Fire Strike. Time Spy Extreme world record at the time. I'm not sure if that score is still up on 3D Mark. Actually, no, it's not world record. It's a global first place for single GPU because they were on just one graphics card. Um, starting off with a four-way setup on liquid nitrogen would probably go really badly. Um, but yeah, it was a it was an interesting video. They explained a little bit, like they didn't go too far in depth on uh, the intricacies. Um, they mentioned that you know mounting is complicated, that you need special thermal pastes. Uh, you need to Vince, insulate everything. Vince is telling multiple times that you don't need gloves. <laughs> yeah, you really don't. You really don't need the gloves. Um, <laughs> But uh, actually, I, I like the part of the video, like like the very intro, like this one. Too, I've seen people do it. I have no idea, like what I would be doing. I'd probably kill the card if I did that. So unfortunately, I don't think that we're gonna. To... Did you hear that? <laughs> so the, 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 when actually Vince arrived, that's actually super nice. That's that's very well Did someone done. Someone say, "What's the clocking?" I mean, yeah, uh, Jay Jay Z Two Cents uh, video production has for ages been just top notch. Yeah, that's that's very good. But I like the the fact that Vince is like, did someone say overclocking? <laughs> and then the blocks weren't. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's good. I have to. You, if you guys can clip that out and send it to me in high quality, I can actually clip that out for like some some random things we can do on the live. I think as well. there's already a clip. I swear, I've there's seen a, a gift one. Version. Yeah, there's a gift one. So that, that that was cool. Like, actually, like uh, Vince and Jace discussed a little bit of like how that's supposed to work and so on. But uh, you can see that Vince was. I mean, if you guys have never so uh, seen Vince bench before, that's exactly how he does that. Like everything is like clean, laid down. Then it's like prepare one thing, test one thing, prepare one thing, test one thing, and then test out and do the score. So in the end, they still managed to get a very good score in. Uh, I can't I never remember the uh, the benchmark name. Time Spy Extreme. Time Spy Extreme. Yeah. So they were like, "Oh yeah, that's awesome. We can actually bench uh, a lot of things." So that's a very cool video, guys. Uh, if you want to go see it, that's gonna be in the description below in the uh, in the YouTube replay. So that's not gonna be a, a, a big problem. And so that's good to see more people actually uh, going to uh, LN2 overclocking, especially Jace. Uh, just two cents. So yeah, I mean uh, that that's good stuff. I mean so far it's interesting to have this uh, kind of interest by uh, some of the uh, famous YouTuber guy. That's uh, that's a good uh, that's a good stuff. It's uh, already four hundred uh, four hundred thousand views. So that's very nice uh, to see uh, that many people uh, there. I haven't reached the comments if people say, "Oh, that's cool," or it's like, "What are you doing? I don't understand." Good stuff. Good stuff. Good job, guys! And uh, oh, and and he already introduced Jay Z to sandbagging. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like first <laughs> time. It's like oh, but that's not our best 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 course. Like ah, oh, yeah, okay, sandbagging. <laughs> maybe Never maybe Jay will be benching for for the US in the country cup one day. I don't think you have one much day. time, but that would be cool. All right. Speaking of cool that would be stuff, so not fair.
Yeah, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> true. <laughs> having like a big YouTuber benching in in a in Country Cup or something because they have so much hardware. That would, be, that would be cool. I mean, at least if they can do it and they can have more people helping them out, that that would I be mean, nice. I mean, yeah, that would be cool. Except for all the co other countries, it's just like, oh no, we're wrecked. <laughs> That's okay. Just just get all the YouTubers in your country to do it. I mean, yeah, Czech Republic has YouTubers. <laughs> uh, well, you have one of the most successful OC teams, so <laughs> why not having YouTubers as well? Anyway, uh, speaking of cool stuff and not so cool stuff, last week we discussed about NVIDIA releasing a new Titan XP thing. Turns out it's a Star Wars Titan XP Limited Edition. Bilzoid, what do you think about that? Um, I, I think it's a bloody joke. <laughs> um, the good news is it's not more expensive, but... Oh, and you got LEDs. But it's just like, well, it, it's a Titan XP, and now it's got a uh, slightly different looking cooler and uh, more LEDs on it. A lot more LEDs on it. <laughs> it looks so... cool, though. It looks interesting. I th like, I could get behind all the lighting if the actual like cooler shroud wasn't so ridiculously overstylized. Like I feel like they've put too many little details and it just looks like a bit of a mess. I mean, I, I kind of think they were trying to go for like a lightsaber handle aesthetic because it is the Star Wars edition, but it's just like, nah, doesn't work for me. I, I don't really, not not a fan. I, I honestly prefer, like, if they took the normal Titan cooler and threw the LEDs on it, I'd like that better. Okay. Uh, actually, in terms of specs, that's exactly the same one as before? Yeah, nothing changed. <laughs> it's exactly the same as the old Titan XP. Um, it costs the same as the old Titan XP. It just has more LEDs on it. And they're not even RGB. What a ripoff. Oh, th that's <laughs> the thing. You have to choose. Either the Jedi Order or the Galactic Empire. You have to choose yeah, your so side. If you want, if you want an RG GPU setup with these, you have to buy both. <laughs> yeah, actually, and you'd still be missing a blue. Yeah, that's actually a good point. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, the same designs, the same specs, the same things as uh, everything before. So not so much to see, except that yeah, we have LED on Titan XP. Good job. That's going to be good for... I mean, that's just the time. I mean, the next uh, uh, Star Wars episode is around the corner as well. So that's uh, that should be uh, good enough. I mean, yeah, that, that's the plan. And it's also uh, it's a new product launch right, right before Christmas. So basically, it's just, uh, it's just usual marketing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, in terms of big news this week, that was not about NVIDIA. That was all about AMD and Intel. The first thing that came out this week was um, Intel finally announced that they will be teaming up with AMD GPU technology to create better laptop for everyone. And turns out there was some leak already about the, the chip itself, which is supposed to look as this according to Chip Hell. Um, by the way, what was the, uh, the, the, the biggest highlight about that? Like what kind of uh, technology do they use? So it's supposed to be a Polaris GPU from AMD, and it's uh, one stack of HBM with that as well. And then the CPU as of right now, it goes under the name of KB Lake G um, for being the graphics update. Uh, one really cool thing that Intel is doing here, which you can, uh, well, if you've seen like a Vega or a Fury X card with no uh, molding on them, well, Fury X, as you can actually see it just fine, there's no molded version. Uh, this doesn't have an interposer for the HBM stack, and this is because Intel has a sort of uh, r upgraded substrate type technology where I think they embed a silicon interposer into the actual mm. substrate of the chip, so the so you don't have that. It, like it doesn't raise the package height, which is really cool for the compactness. For the thin laptop, yeah. Yeah, for the ultra thins, because this is that's really what this is meant for is to put like high end graphics into a really small form factor, um, which Intel kind of hasn't been having a great run in terms of actually making their own graphics cards. So they've gone. Well, they, they uh, always had the, the AMD they one. always had the same issue. So they use their um, iGPU thing, like the GD. I always remember forget the name for that one. Um, 
the GD4 and things for they had in the uh, in their in their CPU and it was never yep. good enough to be actually like a proper disk GPU. And the second thing is, so any laptop, actually, even as mine, like I have here, I have a 10, 1060 in my laptop, and it's like, you have the CPU and you have the GPU. It's two different chip, takes more space, take more wiring and, and lanes and all that in between. It's not on the same package. So we have to, so you have to ensure two times the power delivery. You have to ensure uh, two times well, the, you can the wiring. Well, kind of see that the, the power delivery ends up being like, <laughs> Basically, what it saves you is board space with this design, because um, the power delivery you can see is actually that like kind of ridiculous. I mean, this is a prototype NUC design, so it's not really aimed at super compact. But the VRM we can see hanging out around that is pretty massive for what is basically a reference design. Um, but the main thing is the HBM stack really cuts down on the size that this takes up. Um, the fact that it all shares one substrate, so you don't have two packages lying sort of next to each other and then having to be connected. Well, ultimately, these are actually connected through PCIe um, to each other. It's not any super, you know, super high uh, bandwidth. As patch. as of now and what we know, I mean, if they came up that fast well, with the prototype... Well, the, the thing is, I imagine AMD probably PCIe. wouldn't want to put themselves in a situation where like Ryzen and the Raven Ridge architecture starts losing to a... I mean, this is a completely different market segment, right? This is high performance. This is like high end laptops, a market segment where AMD doesn't exist. So the fact that they can even sell graphics cards to that market at all is really good deal for AMD. And, and speaking of the market, a Willy VT, yes, that's going to be going into the NUC in the, in the Nuke. That's going to be laptop and Nuke for sure. Because for, yeah, for Intel, okay. it's, the same, uh, it's the same target platform for them. Uh, Sam, not exactly, but uh, yeah, well, it's a well, compact. Compact and yeah. powerful system. If it's like gaming, laptop, and and you see, yeah. But th this ultimately, like the this does have some disadvantages compared to. Well, it's not on the latest AMD architecture. It is on Polaris. It's not on Vega, um, which is sort of AMD. I guess it's basically just for development time considerations. Um, and then the well. It's not fully integrated, right? It's not as integrated as what AMD can do when they can take a uh, their own GPU and literally stick it onto the same. Well, silicon. and that's exactly what they would be doing with Ryzen. They could yeah, take a Ryzen die and the uh, and the Vega die and put that like close to each other, so close. Actually, that... no. Raven Ridge is the like they replaced... that's the APU, so that's the two IPs yeah. in the same core. But they could just. I mean, for they them, could it's also easy. build a yeah. Ryzen where you have Infinity Fabric hooking up to like an almost full size Vega cord. That is true, yeah. And maybe they will be able to do some Thread Reaper with the space for the dummy dice with <laughs> two GPUs. Shove HPM. <laughs> oh, dual GPU with HPM all on one. <laughs> oh my God, my God. That'd be insane. That would be insane. The I problem mean, is the Thread Reaper socket doesn't currently support uh, support like a display out. So, well, it depends okay. on how you wear it. They could always give you a PCIe add-in card with the chip. <laughs> as in, like, that would act as the display out. That would be, actually, that would be insane and it wouldn't to have cost this kind that of... Much. Uh, uh. Like, it would be viable to do that <laughs> to some extent, <laughs> and it would be absolutely insane. But yeah, for, for now, Intel has this. Um, AMD's not worried about, like, losing any kind of, uh, like, uh, graphics technology in, in this kind of deal because basically they're just selling uh, finished silicon to Intel. And reverse engineering finished silicon uh, was uh, viable anyway, you in, can't. like, 1970 I mean, at, last. At, at this level, you don't reverse Yeah, you engineer. don't do it. I mean, it's, it's, it's already awful. Polaris. I mean, it's, uh, like, all generation. There's no point in reverse yeah. engineering that. And but the thing is, you'd be reverse engineering a few billion transistors, which you don't want to do. Yeah, and there's no point in doing that, especially because... Raja, that was heading the Earth Radeon Technology Group, is moving to Intel. What a surprise! And they found is that actually that's that's this week. That's like literally like two days ago. And um, so Intel announced they will develop discrete GPUs, not discrete compute units. They will say discrete GPU. GPUs. So that means they're going on the GPU market. There is a catch though. There is a catch though. They don't say they will say discrete graphic cards for consumer. 
They say it discrete looks more GPUs. Like they're aiming to take out Nvidia's uh, data center. Share. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's going to be more on the cognitive side, so more on the uh, AI side. There's a very good write up from Anantech from uh, Ryan Smith. Uh, we'll just post the link as well in the in the chat and all. If you can <coughs> go read that, we'll learn a lot of things on how that's supposed to work and how that's gonna uh, pan out as well. And and there's a lot of things about the former Larabee. Uh, so if we go back a little bit in time, uh, that was like five, six years ago, more than that, eight years ago. I don't know, man. <laughs> so <laughs> La old. Larabee was the project by, at Intel to do a massively para parallel um, like, x86 yeah, x86 chip that they say that could it be used as like, a graphic card so that was first something cores uh, it wasn't like it wasn't a GPU because GPUs have been pushing like hundreds to thousands of cores even at the time because um, even Nvidia Fermi was running something like 480 uh, cores at the time I think that was like 80 something but don't quote me on that it's, it's been uh, it's been a while yeah it was yeah I, I, I remember so at first that numbers. was it was around 80 yeah. cores yeah. at first that was a discrete card meaning that it was actually an add-in card on the PCI Express uh, slots uh, that project was codenamed Larabee then it was killed off and then success coming after Xeon Phi came up and it's actually on the socket and it's exactly Pretty much the same thing. I mean, not exactly, but pretty much the same concept in the back. And now we have um, this. People thought that was, yeah, Larabee 2 is coming. Larabee 3 is coming. It's like, yeah, that's not going to be the same. So we'll see what uh, what can uh, come from that. So Raja Koduri used to be at AMD, took a leave for about 40 days for family family reasons. We talked about that in the OC show quite a few weeks ago. And now that's... Uh, yeah, so actually this week is like Intel announced they will be doing Kaby Lake G uh, with an AMD GPU in it. The next day, Raja Kodri says he's resigning from his position at the RTG, the Radeon Technology Group. And then the next day after that, senior VP at Intel, Intel yeah. holding a business unit to develop discrete GPU. That's a... Uh, that was quite quite intense as a week <laughs> in terms of news. Like honestly, that was that was I, I I was surprised at first, but then it's like it just makes sense for sure. Uh, Raja was leaving uh, Radeon Technology Group. I mean, when a when a C level executive takes like a forty days leave for family reasons, usually it's the, that means they are in transition, and so that's uh, interesting. I mean, if I don't mistake, Raja have been at Apple. Uh, on doing GPU architecture and things, I've been at. Uh, you worked what? at ATI originally. Yeah, I worked. So. At, yeah, I went to Apple. Um, went back to AMD. And, well, I think that back to, went, to went to AMD to... after AMD bought ATI. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think he went to you Qualcomm at ATI as well. While ATI was under AMD, I think because he was there like up to the five thousand series, which <laughs> was I think developed under AMD. I'm not quite certain under. About the details of that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he's basically been at ATI, AMD, Apple, back to AMD, and then... But um, always in the GPU architecture side. Yeah. Always, always. So he's the, he's the main guy. I think we can say that he's one of the main guys behind Vega as well. Uh, so... And maybe some more stuff coming into, uh, in, into, the next, into the future as well for the Radeon technology Yeah, because group. GPU design takes forever. Yeah. Like, if you recently read the... Uh, NVIDIA, what was it, press release on earnings? Um, they actually talk about how they, or no, it was the response from NVIDIA to the news about uh, Intel uh, hiring Raja. They, uh, basically, NVIDIA mentions that, you know, they have multiple teams working on multiple different architectures at any given time. So it's like we, we will be seeing probably uh, leftovers of Raja's work for the next couple of years with AMD graphics cards because there's going to be architectures that like started development under him that I haven't finished yet. Yeah, I mean, even CPU development and all that it takes it's, it's not six months yeah, of I development. Mean, Intel I mean, has also years. multiple chip de <clears throat> develop divisions. Oh, there was a news as well. We didn't actually uh, put this one in. Um, Qualcomm, was that Qualcomm or Broadcom? Because now the two are actually. There's an, uh, yeah, one of them aggressive IPOs the on other. the other one. I I need, I, I, I always Broadcom confuse the to... two. Always, so it's like Qualcomm Broadcom. is buying. No, Broadcom is buying Qualcomm. 
uh, in, wants to at least. Yeah, they, they want to buy out Qualcomm. And I think that it was Qualcomm that came up this week as well with the first chip in 10 nanometer, which is weird because that's usually Intel coming up on the market with new uh, nodes in terms of um, of the nodes for the uh, for the for the, yeah. for the chips. So it's so like I way too much news this week. <laughs> I do remember reading an article, I think, uh, a few months ago um, from a semiconductor summit meeting or one of those big inter-manufacturer meetings where they discuss like various manufacturing processes and like progress in the uh, in the industry. And basically, Intel was saying at that me uh, at that event, they basically said, yeah, we're not beating anybody to 10 nanometer. Um, we're, it's just too difficult for us. Somebody else is going to do it first, but they want to do it better at least. Which considering what their 14 nanometer plus plus does right now is just like, I might believe them. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it, it's going like to be interesting. And, and it's not, and once again, it takes years and years of development and investment and, and you have to build the factory, you have to build the production line, you have to build the, actually, you have to build the tools to build the tools. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. I mean, it's it's insane how um, intensive is in terms of resources and and the fact that it costs a lot of money to to do that uh, that kind of business. So if if someone took a decision to delay by a year, maybe like six years ago, this is what happen is happening now. I I mean that that could be the case as well. I mean, well, Intel was having <clears throat> huge trouble transitioning to just fourteen nanometer. I mean, that's why we saw the whole Broadwell, Broadwell, like br why Broadwell never really went retail. Well, right? it went like, retail had, in a very um, yeah, but it was like super scale. limited quantity because the the initial tape, like the initial fourteen nanometer that Broadwell was on, was just terrible, and it wasn't working for ages and ages and ages. And by the time they got it working, they already had like they got it finally working for like Skylake, um, and so they, <laughs> Broadwell kind of got skipped. Yeah, that's uh, that's crazy. And uh, g guys, if you want to know more about like how that's like, go read uh, the guys at Anantech. They have awesome article about that. Like honestly, uh, even before even when that was Anand writing the article, there was a lot of knowledge about how how that's supposed to work in the factory, the yield, and so on. And most of the time, even when we speak about that, we just get a, like a glimpse uh, about what we can understand. And I mean, I mean, for us. If the process can make sure that we can scale on non frequencies, <laughs> that's good. That's good enough. <laughs> that's good well. Enough. In, the, in that aspect, the best process ever is thirty-two nanometer SOI, uh, SOI from uh, Glowflow. Oh, you know, and the the yeah. FX manufacturing process. Mm -hmm. That stuff. <laughs> that stuff was good. But I mean, there's one thing as pitch. well. Scaling in frequencies, a, that's not only the process, that's also the architecture. Yeah, that, uh, it's also that about the that. architecture. Yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised if, like, uh, it, like I wonder if, if you made a KB Lake on 32 nanometer SOI, I wonder if it wouldn't hit 5 plus gigahertz just fine. It'd probably pull, like, 300 watts to do it, but <laughs> it would hit 5 gigahertz, probably, because that was, like... A, because the funny thing with AMD right now is they're basically stuck on like a intentionally low power, low frequency manufacturing process with Glowflow. They're not using like a high performance, high frequency manufacturing design. Yeah, that's uh, that's true, and that's that's so. Which, which is things. why Intel has such a clock advantage because it's like you have the architectural design uh, side, but Intel is working on 14 nanometer with the goal of. You know, every new iteration, the goal is go faster, go faster, go faster. Um, but that's the, that's the thing. I mean, IBM have, and especially like Mikulti is saying on the on the chat on Twitch. Uh, even even though you have some kind of architecture and process that goes that can go super high in frequencies, uh, it doesn't mean that's always faster. I mean, we know that uh, some arch different architectures can go faster in frequencies, but are not faster in terms of computes. Uh, but the the uh, yeah FinFET SOI hybrid thing from uh, IBM made at Global Foundry, uh, yes, it's like a, it's quite impressive. They 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 claim to have like like ten or twelve gigahertz thing frequency at some point in the testing. Can't remember exactly which one that that was. And there's a lot of different architecture and process as well. I mean, especially um, IBM with the P series, they have the power. So now they have the power nine, 
thing. So it's like it's a different architecture. It's a different process. It's a different yeah, and, way and of it's designing the like completely different like performance goals as well. Like and it's not x86 IBM specifically. So I, like, yeah. I mean, back in the days, for... uh, Sun at the Spark, uh, uh, ARM, like the 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 SOCs we have in the in the cell phones. That's a different architecture system. That's a different set of uh, licenses and IP. So all that's always playing into uh, in, into getting like the, the, the things to work. Um, speaking of new things and new process, uh, Samsung is announcing a lot of stuff at CES, 36 CES 2018 Innovation Awards. Uh, someone had to pay a nice bill for that, I guess. So <laughs> what is interesting in all that for us? So, amongst all of those lovely innovations is 16 gigabit per second GDDR6. So, new memory architecture. It is above what was originally planned. It was originally planned that GDDR6 would be coming in at 14 gigabits per second. So, we're getting a nice speed increase. And this is well, 64 gigabits a second, right? 64 gigabytes. Ah, gigabytes. Ah, oh, damn it. Yeah. I hate this marketing. For a single chip. So, like, I th wait, I think it's single chip? Because I know uh, w what it works out to, basically, is you can now get a 256-bit memory bus with 512 gigabytes of per second throughput. Theoretical. Um, so that's uh, that's great for GPUs in the for 2018. Uh, memory bandwidth should finally not be a problem for AMD. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the fact that they use completely irrelevant things to describe the speed. I mean, we're yeah, talking about it, that just like, before the show. It's like yeah, the, the, they, it, it uh, pros they okay. Okay, if if I read the, the the part of the text, like the speed, the fastest and lowest power DRAM for the next generation, graphic intensive applications. It processes images and videos at 16 gigabits with 64 gigabytes per second data high bandwidth, which is the equivalent of transferring approximately 12 full HD DVDs, about 5 gigs each, per second. Like, wait, what? Who cares about DVDs? <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, what? Actually, it would be funny to have this is the exact same bandwidth than watching the complete season of 24 on Netflix in a second. That would be more representative for people, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's a pretty funny and like representation that that they came up with because obviously this is targeted at normal people and because um, it's a general newsroom for Samsung and Samsung is huge as far as a company goes. So I mean, okay, they they do dishwashers. They do. <laughs> so they have to speak the, to isn't people there a that Samsung can understand. Military branch. I swear, Samsung has a military branch. They build they? tanks and boats. <laughs> Do they? I'm pretty sure they do. Unless they I know kind of... Mitsubishi have. Yeah, but Mitsubishi is Japanese. Samsung is uh, like... Samsung is Korean, so yeah. Yeah, and they do everything. Right, so yeah, so they have uh, 16 gigs. Yeah, uh, they, they, they build tanks too. They oh. build literally <laughs> everything. But they do washing machine as well, which could be very interesting for you, Bilzoid. <laughs> Maybe yeah, they can overclock it. Skew, we need a case skew unlocked washing machine from Samsung. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, they claim the, the new DRAM can operate at 1.35 volts. So that's uh, interesting to that's see. The that's the same as GDDR5X. Um, so yeah, GDDR5X is GDDR5 architecture, but at a lower um, voltage. Actually, it's really different from GDDR5. It runs, uh, it runs 1 to 8 effective uh, bandwidth. It's actually, I think it might be closer hmm. to GDDR6, uh, GDDR6 in that, that it runs at 1 to 8. Because right now, if you look at physical frequency for GDDR5 and then effective uh, speed, you go 1 to 4. So you have like 1500 megahertz uh, gives you 6 gigahertz bandwidth. Uh, I mean, 6 gigabits per second uh, bandwidth. And then like 2000, mega, uh, uh, 2000 megahertz memory chips give you 8 gigabits per second. And uh, now we're looking at 16 gigabits per second, but uh, GDDR5X is uh, typically 12, and it comes in, well, 10 gigabits per second most of, and goes up to 12, I think. I think there's a 12 gigabit version. You lost me. But I <laughs> lost track of it as well. Wait, I need to f look up a GPU spec. Yeah, it's okay. We're just going to have time to speak about that. I think NVIDIA is running 10 gigabits per second, right? 
because I know. Yeah, but the, I guess it depends a lot on the on the bus why and the bus within and things. The, the physical clock for those is uh, twelve hundred and fifty megahertz, because oh. they're eight. Uh, what do you call? I know GDDR five is quad pumped, so that would be like octuple pumped. I guess. <laughs> okay, this is getting ridiculous. Okay. Like they, they, they're <laughs> yeah, it's not actually cranking up the frequency. It's like the, the yeah, physical yeah, like clock the, like is the, low, yeah. and then the data transfer rate is like yeah. way so, above that. The, because the data transfer is linked to the clock, but that's not the only factor that can uh, yeah. improve the. Uh, and and the, the problem is running a really really high physical frequency is not really that viable because. Mm. The trace length starts being yeah. There's uh, a lot of uh, a lot of issues for that, and I'm sure we could speak about like during two hours for that. Anyway, uh, guys, uh, that's almost the end of the show. There is one big thing as well coming up. It's the interview with X Makeup Marco from Italy that won one of the uh, event that was at the OC Italian reunion this weekend. Uh, we have a recorded interview with him that I recorded. Uh, earlier this week, like two days ago, so we'll, you will be able to see that. But stay in there for the interview, and after the interview, because after the interview, we do a live unboxing and Q&A for the Open Bench Table Mini. I got mine right here this week, and it's still completely sealed, so uh, I will be seeing exactly how that's actually uh, turned out and open. So you can see that's the BC1 Mini, that's the first unit out of the factory. Yeah, once again, I got it. So we'll be able to um, open this one and compare with the uh, with the prototype because I still have the prototype that we showed up at the uh, at Computex. So guys, that's gonna be the interview right now with uh, Marco Xmeca. They had an overclocking competition this weekend. I mean, last weekend, and uh, I, I got the chance to talk with uh, with Marco on uh, on Skype. Uh, that should be about like ten minutes, and then we come back for the uh, for the after party. Uh, thank you guys for watching. See you in the after party, and give us uh, some thumbs on uh, on YouTube if you watch that, and the comment below for uh, anything that is. Uh, I mean, if you want to talk about something, uh, well, we're just gonna catch you back after right after this. Hey guys, it's Truthman from Overclocking TV, and today we have the chance to talk with uh, Marco X Meca from uh, from Italy. How are you doing, man? Hey, man, uh, I'm good. Uh, I'm happy to be a part of the CCO to today. Um, Th that's cool stuff. I mean, you guys had an overclocking even the past uh, the past weekend. How was it? Yeah, it was an event organized by AK Informatica, an Italian shop here in Italy, uh, with uh, Arsanino as a judge. Um, we had a normal online qualifier by home on home, uh, fixed frequency, um, every CPU uh, allowed, uh, four core and four thread only. Um, six gigahertz max frequency. Uh, we uh, we did uh, five benchmarks for the qualifier. Uh, especially we we did X2, uh, Geekbank three multi core, X265 uh, 1080p, GPU Pi uh, 100, Cinebenzer 15. Oh, that, that's cool. So, out of the the qualifier, how many uh, people did qualify for the uh, for the event last weekend? Uh, the first four uh, of the ranked uh, had uh, the chance uh, to uh, participate uh, to the the final uh, in uh, Luca, at the the Luca Comics uh, event. So, so Luca Comics, that's the uh, that's the gaming event with uh, it's like like a Comic Con, like a small one. Or how how is that? Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's the biggest one uh, here in Italy. Nice. Uh, it's uh, uh, an event uh, um, where you can play and uh, see newest games, uh, comics. Uh, uh, you can uh, buy things. Uh, um, you, there are every. I think every people uh, uh, that uh, play cosplay nice. are all around. All around the. Um, all around the, um, the event. Oh, that, that's that's cool. So, so you were five people there. Who uh, who was attending? Like, which of the overclocker did qualify? Oh, uh, of course, it was me. Uh, <laughs> then Rule Franco, uh, Ale Bello, uh, Hacker Onzo, 
uh, and then uh, the last uh, who did not qualify it's uh, Hendrix 85 okay so so how did you compete then at the uh, at the event how how was that uh, was that going did you have like a a versus like 1v1 or just everyone to uh, have to do the the best score they can uh, no we started uh, everything at the same time uh, the end was at um, 18 18 p.m um, so, so, we, how, so how long how long was that like four hours or like uh, it was like no it was like uh, six or seven hours Okay. I don't remember uh, uh, the start time exactly because <laughs> that, that there was, was too long. <laughs> a, a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we started uh, by um, insulating our uh, rig. Uh, EKI Informatica provided us uh, the motherboard, um, CPU, RAM, everything. Uh, we um, we provided only uh, the cool uh, the cooling stuff. Uh, we had uh, 800 of LN2. <laughs> Oh, wow, mine, much. that's nice. <laughs> yeah, quite much. Um, then we, we start, after after the, we insulated the, the rig, we, we started to, to bench. Uh, some some people had some problems, uh, broken team or uh, something like that. I, I don't... I didn't have uh, much uh, problems with, uh, with the platform. Uh, I, I think I I did six or seven hours in a row. Wow! Without, you, you, without so you, in, top. you insulate once yeah. and you bench for six hours. Yeah, yeah, oh. six, six or seven hours. I, that that's good. Uh, did you I, use I, uh, what did you use for insulation then? I, I use uh, special things uh, that uh, we can found here in Italy. It's uh, something like nanotechnology. Um, it's called H two H two off. I don't. I don't know it's uh, you can find about, it. Uh, I never heard about that before. Yeah. I can show I, I have it here, I can show you. It's something like that. It's so it's like H2 a of. water repellent? Yeah, yeah, okay. water repellent. But it's something that uh, some Italian in, invented. So uh, So yeah, you're supporting Italian business now. <laughs> yeah, I I um I feel comfortable with that. It's uh, really really nice. It works uh, great. Oh, that, that's cool. All right, so um, so you had like uh, you bench for six hours. What was the benchmark you guys used for defining who will be uh, winning that? Um, that there was always uh, five benchmarks. The same as the as the same as the qualifier. No, not not the same. We we chose uh, some. Uh, uh, Roberto um, asked us uh, what what benchmark we preferred. Uh, and it came for it came out um, XU uh, Cinebase 11.5 uh, X265 4K 3D Mark 11 Physics and W Prime 1024. Oh, that's nice. And uh, all the platform were all on the on the same uh, like motherboard yeah. or chipset or things. All, all the same motherboard Z370 uh, MSI Godlike Gaming uh, E7 8700K. Uh, RAM, it was uh, ADATA XPG mm, 2024 MHz, uh, SSD Samsung, uh, and uh, V120 uh, for, for, for the PSU, see PSU 1200 watts, uh, Cooler Master. Platinum. Okay, so oh, that, that's uh, that's cool. So how was the uh, so in, in the end, who won? I mean, you won, right? Yeah, I, I won. <laughs> I won the, the competition. Uh, <laughs> Franco Franco had some uh, some problems with the platform. Uh, I don't know uh, especially what kind of problem, but uh, he could not compete uh, because uh, I think one CPU was dead. Uh, then he Roberto has replaced the motherboard, uh, but uh, he still got problems, so uh, he could not uh, compete uh, in the competition. While the other two guys uh, had also some little problems, but uh, they they could manage to to solve them, and uh, they tried to to beat me, but uh, they they could not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that that's cool. So what was the uh, the overall? 
um, no feeling about the event, like I got, because I guess it's not that often that everyone in the Italy can just gather at the same place and bench with uh, 800 yeah. liters of LN2, right? How was it? Oh, it, it, it was uh, something that uh, we miss here in Italy because the, the, I think there is an event like that. Uh, there is no this kind of event. So I hope that uh, there will be more in the future because uh, it's uh, something that uh, Italian like them. Italian like really a lot of them, uh, but uh, it's, we, we, it's, it's hard to, to get the, to get yeah, the it's, it's, it's hard to, to to organize them because uh, not uh, not much people um, uh, hard to say uh, not so many people. Um, well, you, you need to have the, the people that can organize that and people that can support this as well and want to do it. It's always uh, it's always tricky to uh, to, yeah. to get uh, enough people to, to do that, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so that's one thing to have like the uh, the overclickers there. But how was the um, the 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 people watching that? Huh? What was the the feedback from them? Oh, you know, the people were were were, think, were saying. Um, Crazy stuff! What's uh, what's uh, what are you doing? Uh, why why the PC are uh, freezed? Uh, stuff like that because they they never saw seeing something like that. Um, so they they all the the people were uh, amazed from seeing uh, this kind of events. Oh, that, that, that's cool. Um, so that, that's very good to have this uh, this kind of event. So you're the winner from that one. Uh, congratulations! Congrats to you. Um, I guess that's uh, that's it. Do you want to uh, to to give some uh, some shout out to people that you want to bench in the future or people in the OC show because that's actually your time now. Um, I want to to speak uh, uh, about uh, uh, a little project that uh, uh, I have um, I'm I'm doing with a friend. Uh, I'm a co-founder of a project called Italian OC Reunion. Uh, it's a meeting point for all overclockers created to share this passion, regardless of the membership team and the type of cooling used. Um, our mission is to create a, a reality that can represent the Italian community in both Italian and worldwide by supporting personal growth of every overclocker and team by sharing process. Um, challenges and competition, as well as creating and participating uh, events uh, on the territory with and without sponsorships. Oh, that, uh, that, that that's that's very nice. Uh, so do we you... have already uh, we have already created an event uh, with ten overclockers, ten Italian overclockers. Uh, Roberto was there too. Um, uh, it it was this April, yeah, this April. Uh, we enjoyed uh, a lot of the that day because uh, it was uh, some something unique that you can't. Uh, it's it's hard to reproduce here in Italy because uh, maybe one uh, have uh, some. Uh, how do you say? Some maybe some one is busy. One uh, in, have to do something something else uh, and can't uh, participate. Uh, so. Uh, Re reunion, reunion, all uh, of the, um, all of them. It's it's quite hard. Mm -hmm. So where can people uh, f find you guys, like at the uh, Italia Italia OC re reunion? Do you have a website or uh, where can people yeah, find have, you? We, we have a website and a Facebook page, but uh, it's still under development. Uh, we will be uh, we will be soon ready to to show something cool. Uh, we have some really cool uh, projects in mind, Perfect. but I can't. I can't give you. You, you can't tell more yet. Huh? <laughs> no, you can't. I can't tell more. I can't tell more right now. Perfect. But I, I hope to that uh, that it will be it will be cool because uh, I believe in that. Perfect. Uh, well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, if you guys want to check out what uh, the guys at Italian OC Reunion have been doing, you can go on facebook.com slash Italian OC Reunion, all in one word. Uh, we'll be posting the link in the, uh, in the the on the Twitch channel on the OC Show if you're watching that there. And uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Marco, for your time. And I hope that uh, maybe one day we will have you on the OC Show uh, completely for that. Thank you for your time. Of course. Thank you.
bye bye yeah so that was it that was marco uh thank you very much guys for tuning in this oc show that was the episode uh 17th of the season four uh, as you can see there is uh mr tech qc and gab behind me uh we will be coming back right after the break for the after party with Bill Zoid as well. And I saw you guys on the live chat. Dan Cup just joined. Uh, keep them the question going. We're just going to unbox the open bench table mini. Uh, that's going to be the first time I actually open the real, the real one. This one is still the old prototype. Uh, so we're going to see that. And if you have any questions, that's the time to just drop them in the comments below in the video or actually on the Twitch live chat. Uh, thank you very much, guys, for tuning in. And we're just going to find you back right after this. Tag. All right. Z. Dunk up, I'm too late. No, no, dude, we're coming back like no worry. Yeah, we're not going anywhere. I'm stuck here. Actually, Dunk up, do you want to join on the uh, on Skype?